I'm Joanne Banco, author, designer, and sewing educator. And you know, as a sewing educator, I love to tell my students, when you sew, you can have what you want, when you want it, how you want it. This classic, classic cowgirl style country western jacket is a perfect example of that. When you take a look at this jacket, you'll see there's a lot of great details. And when you have the ability to sew and embroider, you can create those details yourself. Start with a basic pattern, such as this rodeo cowgirl jacket, and you'll see a lot of different pattern shapes and areas pockets, pocket flaps, yokes. These are areas that can be embellished with embroidery and with decorative stitching. So that's what we're gonna focus on today, those two things. Let's start with the embroidery. Let's take a look at the jacket. And first of all, you'll see these two yokes on the front. These designs are actually a combination of embroidery designs from a CD like the collection that we have here and designs that are built into the machine. And you know, our modern day machines have the ability for you to combine designs and save designs from your computer, transfer them to the machine, take them back to your computer and print templates for perfect placement. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. But let's spin this jacket around and take a look at the back so you can see the embellishment on the back yoke matches the front, of course. So let me show you how I did that, how I figured what to do to make that fill the whole area. Well, the first thing I usually do is pick out designs that I like, and then I play on the screen of the machine. Now, when we work with an embroidery machine, we're always working with hoop sizes. So what I like to do is plan out the area or the size that I'm going to be embellishing and actually cut a, um, a little pattern piece that matches the hoop. You could see my smaller hoop here and you could see my larger hoop here, which is actually the one that I used for the yoke design. So what I did first is created my embroidery design again, then I saved it took it to my computer, printed a template from computer software, and used that to give me perfect placement. You can see that I traced my pattern design on the fabric so that I'm covering the area. Once I hoop that, I'm gonna be able to precisely embroider that exactly where I need that design to go. So the rest is easy. Now, how about this linear design that we have on the belt? Take a look at that beautiful design. That is all built into the machine. We have decorative stitches in this machine that are built into the embroidery mode, which means that I can embroider them in one continuous line. But you need to know a few tricks to get them all linked up together. So let's go over to the machine. I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna show you exactly how that was done. This design is actually um, two parts. I've got a basting outline and I've got a embroidery design combined together. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna stitch out the basting first. And I'm gonna do that with a hoop that can be called a, a, a border style hoop because it's definitely designed for stitching borders. But notice that it's got a clamp on it that pops open and pops, snaps shut. So that makes it very, very easy to simply lay a stabilizer strip in there. All right, so let's go over to the machine select the basting stitch, touch set, touch embroidery. We're gonna embroider that basting stitch. And I like to um, take a couple extra steps, take um, the first stitch by sending the needle down and sending the needle up. Now, you may wonder why we do that. Well, on a basting stitch, on stabilizer only, this is just basic tear away, sometimes that basting stitch has a little bit of trouble catching. So that just gives it a little extra, extra help and an extra start. This takes about one minute to stitch. And while it's stitching, I wanna tell you that this basting stitch is actually built into this machine. So you can take any embroidery design and add a basting stitch around it. We do that a lot when we want to secure our fabric to our stabilizer. You're seeing me doing something completely unusual, but trust me, there's a method to my madness here. And once you see the end result, I think you're gonna really, really like this method. All right, my basting stitch is done. And what do I wanna do? I wanna embroider 
a band or a belt like you see on that jacket. So I have cut my belt to the exact size needed. I've got my seam allowance added. I have added double-sided sticky tape, and this is not the type that you sew through. This is the type that will pull up, but I'm just using this so I can hold my strip to my um, stabilizer and line it right up in that basting. So the next step here is I'm gonna return back home. I don't need the basting stitch anymore. What I need now is my great border design that I built from the built-in stitches in this machine to coordinate with the uh, embroidery designs on the yokes. And isn't that a pretty, pretty stitch? Those just stitch out so beautiful. There's a lot of combinations and a lot of ways you can, you can use these. I think it's a great way to make, um, make trims and belts. So I'm just gonna secure this right here. I've got it nice and smooth and stuck. And I don't know if you could see real close, but I've actually got my um, basting stitches as my guideline. So that now when I go to stitch, I'm gonna do that by Again, advancing to the first stitch, I'm gonna say okay. And I would go ahead and I would um, make a few changes. Now, we're gonna stop because we're gonna switch over to the piece that I already have stitched. And you can see this whole embroidery design has already been done. So let me move this over, save a little time here. And we're gonna slip this one right on. You can see what I've already done here. I'm gonna loosen it up and literally remove this from the hoop. I've got one done. I'm gonna tear this away. Actually, I'm gonna cut it away. I'm gonna re-hoop and clamp that down. Can you guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna return to that basting stitch again because that's the first step for each added border design that I want to stitch. So there's my basting, touch set. And I'm gonna, again, skip to that first stitch. Grab that little tail at the back. One down with the needle and one up with the needle usually brings that bobbin thread right up so that you can lower the presser foot and start stitching that. Always remember to lock that frame though. It's wonderful the way our machines remind us when we make any mistakes. It's like your best friend built inside that machine, giving you a reminder of what you forgot to do. All right, while that's stitching, I'm gonna tear this away. I'm not gonna be too fussy because we can clean all the rest of this up later. But I want you to see this nifty technique for connecting the next portion of this very intricate design to the first one that I already stitched. All right, we go back. We select that border. Right there from the USB. We touch set. We touch embroidery. And I want you to notice a few very important keys on the screen that I'm gonna select. These keys, these built-in features can be your best friend. First one is I'm actually gonna tell the machine, don't cut the threads for me this time, because I want it to stitch the whole entire color without stopping and starting. So that'll save a little time and it's really not necessary. I'm gonna then go to the edit and I'm gonna tell it, stitch in all one color. When I touch that little spool key, it tells the machine, it thinks that I want this color for everything, which is actually what I want. This is a single color design. So it won't stop until it's totally, completely finished. I have one more thing to do here. I'm gonna to touch something we call the trial key. And the trial key just shows you exactly where the design's gonna stitch. So I've told it, I wanna know where the top center is. Okay, I'm going to now turn on a little light that comes right on underneath the presser foot so that I can slide this down. 
And if you look right where my stylus is pointing, that's telling me that the center of that embroidery design is gonna fall right there. Again, I would tape that, and that design is gonna connect perfectly and beautifully to the first one. So we'll let that stitch for just a minute here. And um, what I wanna do is go ahead and show you one that's already finished. So let me grab my finished one and let you see just how perfectly end-to-end -end, continuous stitching, how easy it is to embroider these designs. Now, how about some more embellishment techniques? Let's talk about top stitching. If you take a little, another little peek at that jacket, you'll see on the lapels and on the cuff areas, I used um, a very uh, punchy kind of decorative stitch. And normally when we do top stitching, we think of a plain straight stitch. Well, that's fine, but you can do it with a decorative stitch as well. So I'm gonna switch the machine over to regular sewing. We'll go ahead and stop this, cut the thread. And to switch to regular sewing is just a simple matter of taking off the embroidery foot and switching over to the regular sewing foot. We're gonna go back home and we're gonna park this embroidery arm so that we can sew with the embroidery arm just parked into place. That'll get it out of the way. Disconnect the foot. And we're gonna change to a decorative stitch foot because we're gonna be doing a decorative stitch. Now, one of the things you're gonna see that's gonna be a little bit different than normal top stitching is that I didn't stitch through every layer on the design when I did that design. I only stitched through one layer. So keep that in mind. I like to use the same type of embroidery thread that I use for embroidery to do my decorative stitching. And I've got a little pocket flap here. We're gonna go ahead again in the memory. I have stored an embroidery design. We're gonna go to decorative stitching. I'm gonna use my stylus to get there a little quicker. Okay, and we're gonna pull up a design that was created in the machine. Lower the presser foot, select that design, and away we go. So we can do that type of decorative stitching along any edge, a little bit of stabilizer underneath, but how about adding those decorative stitches to covered buttons? That's something you can do as well. Take a look at this. If you um, go to the website, Download the instructions, we'll show you step by step for this entire project, including a tip sheet for making your own embellished covered buttons. Have fun making your own classic Western wear.